Hello everybody, Cody McIntyre here, Boss Poses 3D, and today I'm going to be showing you guys the rest of our Rust tutorial. So this is also going to be like right from the start to finish, so you don't need to watch the last one to continue. Except this time we're going to be using the one and only Substance Painter, which is an amazing program for doing this. Okay, so just like the last tutorial, you want to make sure you have your uh, Rust objects in a folder. You can download them from inside the game when you go to the workshop at the main menu, and you can just download the objects, okay? So once you have Substance Painter open, we're going to go up to New. You're going to see this window pop open. We always want to make sure this is to the power of 2 starting on 1024, so just leave it like that. If you're using a higher resolution, then just go one step higher than that, but I don't recommend going any higher than uh, 2048. So the next thing we have, the only other thing we actually have to do is hit this select button and we're going to find which item we're going to skin inside of Rust. So let me just uh, browse through here and decide what I want to do. So I did do uh, a pistol earlier. I do want to get an MP5 done, so we'll do that. And you can see the thumbnail right here in the browser. So we do have an MP5. Hit OK and then hit OK again and it's going to start to open and just give it a sec while it loads. So I'm going to run you through the controls. Um, zoom is the middle mouse scroll wheel. You're going to hold Alt and click to turn the model. You're going to hold Shift and right click and drag to change the lighting direction, which is extremely, extremely handy for when you're working on the opposite side. Okay, and I'm just going to explain one other thing really quickly before we do get painting. If you're wondering why I'm not painting directly on this UV map here like you should be able to, for some reason uh, in uh, Substance, you'll notice that it's starting to paint on everything else. When I'm only painting on this island, it's probably just a UV setup uh, somehow, but uh, this is the way the game works, so we're just going to go right off and we're just going to paint directly on the model. It actually is a lot more accurate, and this cursor is really good at staying on what you want it to. So the next thing we're going to do is just make sure you have some materials installed. You can get a bunch for free on the internet. To add materials, you'll click this plus down here at the bottom. This window will come up. Add resources. Find them, uh, your downloads folder, and click import. And it should add them all here at the side, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is I want to add a grip for this thing right here on our MP5. So let's just start with the grip. So let me go down and find something that looks like a grip, like this plastic fabric looks amazing. So all you're going to do is click and drag it onto your model. It's going to apply it to the whole model, okay? So if your uh, texture looks like this, this is usually one of these uh, basic materials that you can do this with. So we're going to bring this UV over. We're going to zoom out a little bit, maybe even on the gun. And we're going to drag this these squares down. Now you see over at the side on our gun that it's starting to line up a little bit better. So we're going to keep it about like that. I'm going to bring the gun back. So we don't want everything else painted, so we're just going to right-click this, hit Add Black Mask, and that's all going to disappear. Now when we paint, it's only going to expose the layer that we applied. So we can go ahead and just paint this grip up. If you're getting a lot of bleeding, you can turn the spacing down to 5, but it's working pretty well for me right here. And like I said, it's really good at staying accurate on the part that you're drawing on, so you won't get a whole lot of bleeding going on, but we are going to be painting the rest of the gun, so. Wonderful. And as you see, that was really simple. And it has a depth map. So this is like a 3D uh, material texture on it. So that's great. And it shows up wonderful inside of Rust. So this is why I recommend using Substance. It's just probably the best you can get. I don't re recommend using Blender to do the painting and stuff. Especially when you're getting fine angles like that. You could always clean it up in the UV. But again, it's going to paint over a bunch of other stuff. It's really effing annoying. So we're just going to do the no bullshit method, and we're just going to do it this way, because it's actually fun, and you have a lot more control over it, and it's easier than you think. So we're actually just going to get the front here. There. Now we have a grip. And if I were to hit mirror, it would mirror to the other side. But currently, it is not mirrored to the other side. So now you're probably wondering, all right, sweet. Now let's get the rest of the textures in here. So say if I want this tarp, because tarp is actually an item in Rust, right? So it just makes sense to use that on an item. We're going to click and we're going to drag this onto here. 
and you'll notice that our tarp actually took over uh, this texture right here. You can do many things with uh, layering textures, or you can bring this uh, old one back up, and then you won't have that tarp layer over it. But we're still going to click the uh, fabric tarp, and then we're going to add another black mask, of course. Okay, just make your cursor a little bit bigger for the grip. And then we're just going to paint in the grip. And if you hold shift on the last place you click and then drag and then click again, you can paint lines, which is incredibly useful for getting a uh, tight fitting uh, paint. So like, for example, right here would be a really good place to do that. So if I were to click here, hold shift, go to the bottom and then click, right? And then get the accuracy I'm looking for. And then we can just polish that up like that. Okay. And then we're almost done the grip. If I had mirror, the other side would paint along with it. But I usually add like decals and images and we'll go over that in another tutorial. So we have, uh, now we have our tarp grip on there. I should be doing the bottoms and stuff, but don't worry about it right now. I'm going to come down. I'm just going to find another material, like a metallic metal of some kind. So it's really nice right here. And again, we're just going to hit right click, add a black mask, and then what we're going to do is start painting in some pieces. So I'm going to do the trigger red. Okay, now that we have that, we can even do some fun things, like add like a grip line. You could probably do a little bit better than that. Or what you could even do is do like lines across it. Something like that. And then what we can do is actually do like a bottom of the hilt here. We do something like that, and then you would obviously have to go around the entire object because you wouldn't see this side. We'll just do the one side just to show you because when we're inside of Rust, I do believe he holds it that way. So we'll be looking at it like this, I believe. If not, I'll just show you that it did work. But anyway, we're going to go ahead. We're gonna just going to keep doing the same thing we were doing. And again, add black mask. Start painting. So we'll just make the whole top just for tutorial sake. You could do a better job if you want. Have that and say I wanted the inside of this too. We could hold shift. Get a nice little green thing. So now we have kind of like a rust skin, you know what I mean? So you kind of get the idea of this whole thing. So again, we can add more textures. That's actually a really nice stylized stone. But again, the stone is a little, little too big. So we'll just go to scale that down. And then we can... Just do our grip. And then I'll show you how to get it into rust. Because I know a lot of people don't want to see me make a really nice skin and take forever to do it. You just want to get through the bullshit and you just want to learn how to make this skin and go about your day, right? So we're going to do that. So right now we have semi-skin, I guess. Just get a little color in here.
something like that you know it's not perfect it's not pretty it's not good but it'll it'll work for getting inside of rust okay so i'm gonna show you guys how to export these textures now for getting it into rust so the first thing we have to do is make sure that we go over to texture settings or sorry what we want to do uh first yep yeah, go to texture settings we want to come down and this is where we can bake our mesh maps so uh, what I usually do is I select all of the layers. I go to here, and then I hit Bake Mesh Maps. And then you're going to get this window that pops up. So right over here, you can see what you can bake. Bent Normals, World, Normal. And then we're going to bake selected textures. And you're going to see this cool little uh, animation go by. And then what we're going to do is return to Painting Mode. Okay. And now when we look over at the UV, as you see, all of our texture is right here, and that's amazing for rust. But the reason why I did this is for the ambient occlusion, because we have to add that ourselves into the template. So now we're good to go to export into rust. So what we're going to do is hit up file, export textures. You're going to get this window that pops up, and this is where you're going to need to pay attention, okay? So you obviously want to choose your folder. Mine's on the desktop in rust. And I will just call this into a folder called MP52. Why not? Select folder. And as you see, that is MP52. We're going to change this output template down to this Blender Principle BSDF. Okay. And then what we're going to do is go to output templates. We're going to find that Blender one right here at the side. And as you see, we have one more thing to add. And that would be our ambient occlusion. <clears throat> So to do this, I want you to add a gray scale, and then I just want you to drag that ambient occlusion into here, and then create a gray scale from that. And as you see, we have a gray scale uh, ambient occlusion for that. And that's all you have to do. Come back over into settings. We're just going to make sure everything is good. Leave this as uh, dilation infinite, base textures on each side. So that's all good. Uh, based on output template, so it's going to be using the Blender template. And then all you have to do is hit export. And as you see, it exported successfully all of our things. You may get some uh, issues down here. Alpha can't be uh, generated in the texture de default material. That's just because we didn't set up the notes for that specifically. So don't worry about these uh, errors. What you want to look for is right here in green. So we do have everything we need to uh, get this into Rust. So we have a roughness, normal, metallic, emission, displacement, base, and alpha. So we actually have a few extra things that we don't actually need. This is just an easy template for you to start off getting this into Rust. This isn't at all like perfect because you should have um, a sheen and stuff like that or what was it called? A glossiness is what uh, I was trying to get. But you can just use the metallic for the glossiness. So that's perfectly fine. So now what we're good to do is open up Rust and then we can start importing uh, our textures. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now that we're at the Rust main menu, what you wanna do is click this workshop right here and you can see everyone's items. And we're just gonna create, click new, or sorry, create new item. And we're just gonna let this load. This takes far less time to load than the base game. So be patient. Okay, now that it has loaded, we're just going to go up to our character here. Click down here where it says time and just scale this over to change the time of day. We're going to go to item and then we're going to find our MP5. So we're going to go down to the M category, MP5. And then that'll probably snap, just go back up and uh, scale it like so. Let's find the side with this slide on it. So this will be the side that we edited, I do believe. So we're going to stay here. You're going to click edit up here. And this is where you can start adding your texture. So we do have a diffuse map. So I'm going to go to MP5 2. And right here we have a base color. So we're going to put the base color there. And as you see, we have our texture on this side right here. We're going to go to normal. We're going to find our normal. And as you see, now we got our depth into our model. And we're going to go to Oculusion. We're going to find our grayscale. I didn't label it Oculusion, but as you see, now we got the shadow depth back in there. And you can scale this to as you wish. So we're going to leave it like that. And then for specular, you can go metallic. And then you should have your metallic uh, reflection on whatever is metal. We didn't add any metallic colors directly onto here. So you might not uh, entirely see it. Emission you don't have to worry about. That's all you really have to worry about for rust skins. If you turn your graphics settings all the way to the max, you will notice uh, a huge change. So if I bring this up, maybe he'll flip it around. 
as you see we have our rust skin in the game sort of you know this could all do some work uh you can customize your ao maps to get a bit more uh reflection on things so you know if i go to glossy you can see that we are changing the gloss and another thing you can do is if that didn't work we also have a roughness map you can implement and as you see that gave us uh the reflection that we're looking for so I always recommend using the roughness instead, but as you see, it's going to apply it to those as well. So you got to be kind of careful. So what we can do is uh, minimize the glossiness just low enough so that uh, the metal is what's glossy and the rest isn't. So that's pretty much how you do that. That's how you make a rust skin in Substance Painter. It is that simple. There's no bullshit to it. So just keep playing around. Keep playing with your Oculusions and your settings and all that fun stuff and then you should have a fun time making rust skins like that actually looks pretty good and to see what the graphics options are we can go into graphics and we are on ultra settings but our shader level is a little bit lower so that's pretty much how you do that and if i change the time of day you'll notice that we have a very legit you know start to a skin and we even have all the detail from inside the pitting of the metal and stuff not sure why this is glitching out like that but that's perfectly fine but thank you all for tuning in today if you have any other questions please just drop a comment down below i answer usually within the same a day please do again like and subscribe and i will see you all soon in the next tutorial happy skinning and rust